So today I am going to give you a review of what I believe is the best and worst of Spider-Man Far From Home. I'm actually going to shut off my fan because I don't know how much of that you can actually hear. There's another one, but that's more in the background. Um, so I don't know how long this video is going to be. It might be longer than most of my vlogs like this or whatever you want to call this. It might be shorter. I don't know. But, um... First off, let's start with the fact that this is the second movie in the third Spider-Man trilogies. I'm saying third trilogy as in the third Spider-Man having to play Spider-Man. Now, obviously this takes place right, I think right after End, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, I think it will take place not too long after that. Um... So obviously there's a lot of fallout from Endgame, there's quite a few things brought up within this actual story. Uh, if you don't like spoilers, then I don't suggest you watch it because I don't have a spoiler free version of this. I'm just going to give you everything I know from the movie, what I thought, and what my grade is. Or what I rated as, I guess. Um, First off, let me start with the cast. Um, I don't know most of the cast, so if you see me looking over here, it's because I'm going to use my second phone here to look up the cast, so just just so you guys know. Okay, so let me type that in. Okay, so obviously um, Tom Holland, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, let, me, let me actually just get the cast up so I don't have to wait. Okay, so Tom Holland obviously plays Spider-Man. Now, in the first movie, he was pretty good. I feel like he was still trying to get used to it, you know what I mean? Um, I think he played a very, like, in-between type of Spider-Man, you know. He wasn't extremely cocky or, you know, quick, quick witty or whatever as the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, but he wasn't the super nerdy, no friends, you know, whatever you want to say Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is. In this one he was a lot more in, in you know in depth with this character I guess. Maybe in tune. Um, I felt like he wasn't playing a character in this movie. I felt very close to the movie itself. Um, I feel like it, if there, which we are likely will be a third one, because unlike Andrew Garfield, there's no conspiracies or whatever surrounding Tom Holland, so he should be fine for another installment. Uh, in terms of the progression, I like how he, uh, here's where the spoilers start, when he has to go on the school trip while also sim simultaneously fighting evil, air quotes, and I'll talk about that when I talk about the villain character. The main villain character, because all the other lackeys are only really introduced, and get that little bit of screen time, and the rest of it's just not really important on their end. Um, you know, I like how they let his character develop a little bit. Sorry, once again, I am trying to make sure that the cast stays up on my feed. I guess would be the good way to put it. Um, I did decide that when it comes to Spider-Man, he's definitely my middle ground, I would say. Not just based on what he brings to the table, but also based on just the type of Spider-Man I enjoy. Um, my top one is obviously, actually not obviously, because everyone has their own top ones. My top one is um, Andrew Garfield. In my opinion, he brought the... Uh, in my opinion, the most accurate representation of Spider-Man to the MCU, and I stand by that 110%. Okay? So, now that I got that out of the way and I can get comments saying how I don't know anything, or just dislikes, because, you know, that's what people do. Um, I feel like from start to finish, he does get a lot of character depth, character development. He uh, learns from mistakes. He realizes that he is basically one of the only hopes in this current situation of everyone coming out alive, basically. 
Um, Tony bestows upon him his sunglasses with Edith in them. So luckily there's, you know, there's that little, almost like a fatherly gift to him that was basically to decide who the next Iron Man is. Or at least that's what we all thought. But, you know, he ended up getting them back. And needless to say, that's, we don't really get to see him use them all that much because he doesn't get them back until the end of the movie. And the twist at the end um, is something different. And I'm not, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. I'm not going to go over the entire cast because that would be way too long. And most of them are, un con you know, don't really have much use in the movie. Zendaya obviously plays MJ. Um, I like how she had a slightly more, you know, center stage role. In the first, first one, she was a lot more in the background of the movie. Uh, when stuff went down, she wasn't too far away from it. But at the same time, she wasn't really in view of the camera all that much unless you paid attention. But I think Zendaya pulled off this character quite a bit. Um, she brought a lot of emotion to it. I think she played this version of MJ probably better than anyone else could have. Unless anyone else could think of anybody. If so, comment down below. But Zendaya's, I'm going to keep it rather short because... Unlike Tom Holland, this is the first version of MJ where it's, she's not known as Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy or whatever. She's actually, you know, a separate, seemingly a separate character with separate character motivations and whatnot to the other two installments. Um, I think you get to see her still be a mysterious character, but we do get to see her open up her, with her feelings and all that throughout the movie. And, uh... Once again, the, they do get together, obviously, at the end, Spider-Man and MJ, but I like that it took until basically the end of the second movie of the trilogy for them to get together, unlike Amazing Spider-Man when they were together basically close to, if not just after, halfway through, and then obviously the original one. I think they were together through the second one and the third one, and part of the first one. I can't remember the original one as much. But... They get together near the end, and I do like that it's completely different compared to the other two. So, Zinday obviously knocked it out of the park. The last one I'm going to do that isn't like a staple in Marvel, you know, like Samuel L. Jackson is a staple, and all these other people aren't really that important to the actual story. However, Jake Dellendor, sorry I can't pronounce his name, but this is the last character I'll be talking about. That's what he looks like. Um, he plays the villain. He plays the villain. Um, I think they call his superhero Mysterio. But I think his actual name and the thing, I forgot exactly what it is. Uh, honestly. Um, I did enjoy the movie and all that, but I can't remember his name for the life of I'm, it'll come to me when I'm done recording this, most likely. But, I mean, he played a very good villain. Um, I think the thing that I like about this villain is it's not some self-absorbed person at the beginning. You know, it feels like he is just trying to right the wrongs where his team and him weren't really given credit for all their work and were basically fired by Tony Stark. However, after you get past the drones that basically made natural disasters and monsters attack and all that and somehow produce real damage which is one of the few flaws in this movie that I can figure out um you know excessive damage anyways um he does become more of the typical villain only cares about himself doesn't really care about his help or anybody else as long as he wins uh so when he gets his crumpets at the end I am very happy until the end of the movie now as far as the characters are concerned, I give Tom 10 out of 10, I give Zendaya 10 out of 10 as well, and I give the villain 10 out of 10. I think the actors in this movie just hit it out of the park, in my opinion. Okay, so now let me get to the twist at the end. Now, wait, no, her, his mom, I need to get to this part. I love how this is the first Spider-Man where the mom, mom not the mom, the aunt, knows that he's Spider-Man. 
I think it's a nice little twist. It's a very big difference compared to the other Spider-Man movies. And I, for one, just enjoyed her not having it as a secret. I like that happy, you know, Tom, Tony Stark's best friend is basically hitting on the ant now as if living, you know, his legacy more or less. But there's plenty of comedy, plenty of action, plenty of little quick, you know, lines that are just very funny. Um, in the end of the movie, however, there's an edited video that somehow was made from one of the scientists that was connected to the suit of the bad guy. That basically um, exposed Spider-Man. Um, basically said Spider-Man you know, edited it to where Spider-Man was the one that caused the deaths in Paris or London. Paris? Paris, which is where they were at. Um, and then said he was Peter Parker. So, I'm curious to see where the third movie leads. Um, so to end this, I would like to give the movie itself a 9.5 out of 10. Now the reason why it's not a 10 out of 10 is the drone thing. And I think the twist at the end, even though it's different, I think does kind of put them into a weird position to start the third one because now you got to figure out if the MJ and Spider-Man thing is still going to be a thing or if Spider-Man leaves the protector then maybe she follows. I don't know, but that is my review of Spider-Man Home or Far From Home. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you didn't, which most of you probably won't, then hit the dislike button. Um, give your, me your opinions down below what you thought of the movie, the characters, the actors or actresses that played the characters, as well as what you think will happen in the third installment. Thank you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.